So I've got to replace my dash camera. Um, I've got a Nextpace 222, which I've been quite happy with. I've had it for about a year and a half, but it's getting hot. It sits in the window all the time. I never take it out. So basically it just sits up there and cooks um, full sun. So basically it's just overheating. So I'm going to replace it with this dash cam. I'm going to hook this one up, show you how it works, and let you know whether this one's any better. Now for $39.99, this does have a rear-facing camera and a front-facing camera. I paid $99 for the next base, which has only the front camera. If you want the rear-facing camera, it's about $200 to get the front and rear-facing cameras. So I'm going to open this thing up, and we'll set it up here on the table, and then we'll take out, hook it up in the vehicle. So here's what's in the box. We've got the camera. We've got a charging plug for your car. Um, I usually just plug this into a, a, like a um, regular uh, USB port in the vehicle. Um, so you'll probably have to buy a cable if you don't already have one. This has a micro SD head on it. So get you a USB to micro SD cable if you don't already have one. Most people have those laying around. Uh, the dash cam actually does have an SD card in it, so it's got a 16 megabyte SD card built into it. Well, not built in, but came with it. Um, most of these dash cams do not come with the SD card, so you end up spending 40 bucks for that. Then you spend another 30 bucks for a memory card. So even if that memory card was worth 15 bucks, 20 bucks, that makes the camera worth about 15 dollars. So I'm not sure what kind of quality or what kind of life we're getting out of it, but we're going to use it anyhow. Uh, it comes with one of these little uh, suction cup mounts. Um, I don't like the suction cup mounts very well. Again, I'm in the heat though all the time and the heat plays havoc on these. So if this hangs in your window all the time in the heat, you're going to come back out and it's just going to be dangling from the cord uh, after a little while. Um, the next base comes with the one that glues to your windshield. Uh, some people don't like gluing it to the windshield because again, you glue it to the windshield, it's on there pretty much permanently. You can get them off without breaking the glass. You just have to be careful. So this is a good temporary situation or if you're going to take it down every day. Um, you can just pop that off, unplug the cable, and take it with you. So it is protected. It has little lens covers, so make sure you pull these little lens covers off. These little pieces of plastic that are covering the lens. The display. And then the other camera. So after I have my protective covers off, I'm going to plug this in again. I'm going to plug this in in here so I can set it up. It's just going to be easier for me to show you how to set it up in here versus hanging from the vehicle. Uh, this camera does adjust, so you can go up and down with it. I'm not sure exactly um, why, but I mean, most of the time you can turn the camera left, right, and you just adjust it here. So why forcing this downward would matter, I don't know, but either way, that's how it is. So let's plug it in and see what it looks like. Now again, I've just used a regular USB cable. I've plugged this into the wall outlet. So we're going to power it up with this. And so start recording. So basically we're in the menu and it's going to record now. So there's my in the car cam. All right, so over on the left hand side, we've got a red button and a black button. Black button's power button, turn it on and off. The red button's to manually record. So if you manually want to record something, let's say you do have an accident or something, you can actually start and stop the recording from the side. Or if you're in a parking lot and something's going on, you want to record, you can manually start and stop it from over here on the side. Okay, so to get in the menu, to change the settings, we're going to press the M button one time, and then we can go up and down through here. Now you'll notice at the top, if you used it on camera before, there's a little settings gear up there. It's a little hard to see, but um, you'll see it up there at the top. On the old on cameras, you had to actually hit the menu button again to get over there. This one, you just go down through. Once you get to the bottom, it switches to that second menu, so you don't have to worry about hitting the menu again. But it doesn't go back up so you do have to hit menu to get back to the first page so it goes to the second page but not the first page all right resolution i'm gonna hit okay and you've got 1080 uh, hd which is going to record the best quality and use the most memory so depending on what you're using this for it's going to loop record over itself unless you're going on a long trip or something like that it really only needs to record two or three hours at a time at the most if you want to record more time i suggest putting a bigger sd card in there just to record more memory so I'm going to leave mine at 1080p. The passenger camera, um, on or off, so you can actually turn on or off the second camera. So if you don't want to see yourself, you can turn that feature off. Uh, infrared emitter, that's going to be automatic, so that's night vision basically. So when the uh, it's dark, basically you can still see yourself inside the uh, vehicle. 
Uh, audio record, this is up to you. You can turn it on or off. Um, I never know who I'm going to be talking to or what I'm going to be saying, so I don't know that I, uh, I want everything I've ever said or done. Or You definitely don't want to hear me singing on the, in the background, so I'm going to turn my audio off personally. Uh, loop recording. Now, this will record for one minute, three minutes, five minutes. Uh, the old ones just do 10 minutes at a time. I would suggest three or five minutes. Um, it just makes it easier when you're going to go back to look for something you can find it a little bit easier. Driving impact detection. Um, that's basically if the camera senses a jolt, it'll start recording automatically. Uh, you can probably leave that in the middle. Hopefully you never need that part. Parking mode recording, if you hit that, that's on or off. Basically what will happen is if somebody walks in front of your vehicle, it'll start recording automatically until the little internal battery dies and then it stops recording. Um, LED screensaver, basically after you know 30 seconds a minute, two minutes, the screen just powers off so you can't see it. Auto power off, I always set that on because if not it's just going to run the battery down and kill it. As soon as you, you can set it so it records for, or keeps on recording for 30 seconds afterward or a minute. Uh, personally, as soon as I shut my vehicle off or as soon as the power is killed to it, I want it to turn off. Beep sound, that's kind of obvious. Do you want it to beep like it does now when you're going up and down through the menus? I don't mind that. Uh, language, if you need to change your language, uh, English, French, uh, Spanish, and Chinese are your choices. So I'm going to go English, date and time settings. So I'm going to change the date and time in here. Uh, format SD card. I always do that at the beginning just to make sure you've got a nice clear uh, card, even though. Um, it, it's a new camera, so it should be nothing on it, but I still like to format it anyhow. Uh, this is the version, and that's got the date on it. So I'll check and see if there's a newer version. If there's a software update for this, uh, I'll show you how to do that on a separate video. Uh, sometimes you update software and you get a little better quality, better resolution, fixes some bugs, things like that. So, and so I'm going to take this out, pop it in my vehicle, drive around for a day or two, and check the memory out, see how well it works, see what the quality looks like when I'm recording and driving, and we'll do an update and show you what it looks like. Now I'm seeing some pulsing on the screen through my camera. I'm also seeing that pulsing on this screen uh, on my LCD display. Uh, normally that's a um, power quality or power issue. It could be because I've got it plugged into a cable with an extension cable and into a power outlet on the wall, so I'm plugged in 120 volts reducing down to that. So once I put this in the car, that wave may go away. If it doesn't, I'll let you know. Uh, it doesn't really affect the viewing, but you can definitely see some pulsing going on. All right, so I decided to put these in my ProMaster. Um, I've got the lights off uh, in the garage just so we can see a little bit better uh, what the displays look like. I've got a pilot beside of this one. I did a video on it also. Uh, this was like a $19 camera. Again, $39 camera. I'm just trying to keep these uh, inexpensive for people because if you um, use them in a work vehicle, if they set out in the sun all the time, there's no sense in spending $400 on camera just for it to cook. Um, so these are more for work vehicle or I call them disposable cameras. So I'm gonna turn the lights off. I'm gonna power these up. And as you can see, the displays are about the same. That starts recording as soon as you turn it on. Same with the pilot, starts recording. I've got about the same width, almost exactly, uh, on both cameras. So again, I'm gonna drive around with this for a few days. Um, it did get rid of the pulsing. As you can see here, it's not pulsing anymore. Um, so basically plugged in the 120 volt outlet. Um, it's not meant to be in 120 volt outlet. I uh, was causing the pulsing, so that looks much better. Again, I'm going to drive it for a day or two. We'll see what they look like compared side by side. See how hard it is to get the uh, video off there. Now, I do notice that this is really dark over here. So this is my internal camera. Uh, so the infrared has not kicked on yet. I might have to turn it on manually. Um, I'm not sure. I'll have to play with settings a little bit. Again, when I do the update, I'll tell you what I find. So I don't know if you see up here or not. This is the internal camera. Um, it's hard to see on the little screen, but it's really really dark so as i put my face over here in front of the camera you can't even see my face in here and i'm sure it's going to look better in the daylight and again it may look different on a large tv versus a three inch LCD display 
So I've got my camera here. I'm going to plug it into my computer. I've just got a little uh, USB cable. I plug it in the computer. It's going to take a second to power on. And once the power, screen powers on, you'll see it's got different settings. It's got a um, mass storage, PC camera, or RBC mode. So I'm going to go into the mass storage. So I'm going to go OK. When I do that, you'll notice it pops up onto my computer. So now I have a folder open on my computer. So now that I'm here, I can go into my folder. I double click the folder. I've got a one, a two, which is the uh, camera one and camera two. If I click on that, it shows me the videos that I recorded. I'm going to change the view to extra large icon, so it gives me a preview of what I've got. And then I'm just going to double click on one and should play the video. So that's the cars gone by. Again, it's not the it's not a 4K picture. It says 1080p, and I'm kind of debating whether it's 1080p. It looks more like a 720 to me. So the quality is not super high quality, but for 40 bucks, again, the camera itself is probably 15 bucks. The memory card was 15 bucks. Um, so for a 40 dollar camera, this will probably do most people, you know, just fine. If you're trying to record, uh, you know, something for like a trip or something like that, uh, you definitely want to buy a better camera. But if it's just for a work vehicle like this one is. Uh, or if just in case there's an accident, this would more than uh, definitely do what you need it to do. Go to camera two. And we'll do the same thing. View. I'll just change my desktop. It's a good picture. And as you can see, the inside, same thing. Not the best quality in the world, but you can uh, definitely see what's going on in there. Color is definitely not right. Um, the lighting is not right. Uh, it looks like the infrared's on, even though it's daylight. Um, but either way, again, for 40 bucks, not bad.